so uh, we'll be talking about uh, traction inverters uh, we'll, we'll be having a nice uh, introduction about them uh, and this will be in the context of electric vehicles so let's let's quickly have a look at the contents and then we can start going into the details of that so yeah uh, so this gives a just a brief summary uh, about what we are going to talk in the next hour or so so uh, it's it's very critical to, uh, to establish the context for the electric vehicles so uh, so in, initially uh, we'll be going through of what the present scenario for the EVs look like, uh, even in the global market, uh, not only for India. And uh, after that, uh, we, we need to understand the architecture uh, of an EV, uh, mostly from electrical point of view. Uh, so we'll, we'll be having, uh, having a look at how the components uh, interface with each other there. And uh, once we do that, uh, we can move to inverter and try to understand its role. So. Uh, uh, it, an inverter typically can play some multiple roles in an EV, so uh, we need to understand that uh, first. And uh, then after that, we'll, uh, we'll be having a look into its some subsystems, uh, how, the, how they interface with each other, uh, and and also some, uh, we, we need to distinguish it uh, with respect to non-automotive non inverters. Uh, for example, we see inverters in homes or in industry, so we'll be having how our traction inverter differs from those those inverters, and yeah. So once uh, once we are through with these basics, uh, then we'll be looking into some key technical aspects, uh, which uh, which are essential to understand. Uh, and so for that, uh, there's a block diagram uh, which will show how how a closed loop system uh, for an inverter looks like. And and then we'll we'll move to the main components that that embody that embody a modern day uh, EV inverter. So uh, uh, this will this will have some power modules, uh, control board. Uh, then there's a control algorithm also, gear driver, and also other components that follow. And finally, uh, we'll be having a, a very brief uh, case study uh, regarding a selection of an traction inverter. For a, for a three-wheeler uh, electric vehicle. And lastly, uh, 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 it will be interesting, uh, I think, for all to know uh, what what the recent job trends uh, in this field look like. So uh, we'll be ha having a look there as well. So yeah, so that, that was for the contents. So let's now uh, actually move uh, uh, to the webinar. So. So yeah, so, uh, so just to understand uh, the EV scenario, so most of most of us uh, uh, might well know that uh, electric vehicles are increasingly looking promising now, uh, not only in India but uh, globally, and uh, we are seeing uh, we are seeing uh, so many automotive manufacturers are continuously announcing new plans uh, to either uh, electrify their existing models. Or, or even build build a new complete new electric vehicle, and uh, they are they they offer a very good fuel economy uh, when they do that, and also it 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 allows them to be much more competitive now. Uh, uh, they uh, with respect to the existing uh, ICE vehicles uh, that we see, and uh, consumers are also increasingly demanding much more efficient vehicles now. So, so for example, uh, countries in Europe uh, like uh, France and Germany and also the UK uh, have already put some restrictions now on on the sale of non-electric vehicles, and uh, this this can start as early as uh, 2025. Uh, so we can see uh, there has been you know a complete uh, serious uh, approach to that to the implementation and. This also makes uh, this uh, EV industry, uh, you know, one of the most necessary you know, area of innovation today because it's it's a very big transition uh, from the existing uh, uh, IC engine-based vehicles uh, to to an electric uh, electrically uh, fed vehicle. And uh, so once we understand that, uh, it's uh, it follows that uh, 
uh, we since we know that attraction inverter is is a very significant component uh, of all these uh, of all these electrified automotive patterns that we are, that we are going to see in the near future or or you are already seeing in in some in some markets and it's worthwhile to know that uh, development in the power electronics area uh, has has been a key driver uh, behind this so uh, since uh, the recent developments in technology has, has enabled much lower cost inverters uh, which offer a high efficiency and a good reliability which is very very critical for for an automotive application uh, so uh, just to get in some numbers here uh, so uh, there are a lot of surveys so uh, we understand that by the end of 2020 uh, there were already 10 million EVs uh, all over the globe uh, and uh, you can see on the on the graph on the right hand side that uh, this is set to set to uh, increase in the in the next decade this is uh, this is predicted by uh, multiple sources across the globe that uh, this trend is only going to increase in the in the in the coming decade and uh, even even in the uh, you know despite the downturn in the car sales due to the pandemic uh, the registration percentage of evs has still seen an increase in 2020 uh, which which is quite promising and uh, yeah and just to understand so for 2020 uh, 3. million 3.1 million evs were sold which which forms uh, around 4.7 percent of the of the total passengers cars uh, sold so we can see the start uh, has been indeed been there and uh, this this looks quite promising that uh, it will sustain itself uh, in the coming decades so so it is indeed predicted that uh, ev sales will keep rising globally and uh, so this number from 4.7% can can get as high as 48% by by 2030 so these are just projections, but they it's, uh, they, they are backed by uh, substantial uh, research. And also worth noting is that uh, it won't completely replace the ICE vehicles, but uh, but uh, the EVs will will start occupying a dominant share of the market. So uh, so and and indeed a report by IESA uh, says that the EV market in India is is also looking forward to reaching your 63 lakh uh, units uh, by the year 2027 so uh, it's certainly paints a much positive picture uh, in india also so <clears throat> once uh, once we understand this scenario uh, uh, it it, uh, it follows the uh, the challenges uh, that uh, that will uh, that uh, that will be imposed on this on these components that make up an EV, and uh, attraction inverter being being such a component, will uh, you know will we needs to be innovated and uh, implemented uh, to satisfy the vehicle requirements. So so here we see uh, an EV architecture. Uh, we so this is uh, this is typical, and this this can change uh, depending on on a, on on the manufacturer, but but broadly speaking, uh, uh, this this uh, this represents uh, a very uh, basic picture of that. So, so so we know that uh, an EV will ha will have a HV battery, and that will that will feed to the to the traction inverter which you are talking about, and the inverter is going to drive your uh, traction motor, uh, which go which is going to uh, propel your vehicle. Uh, so yeah, so we know that uh, the HV battery. Uh, uh, feeds to the inverter and which is going to drive the traction motor uh, which is uh, responsible for the for the for the vehicle and uh, after that we there are certain other auxiliary loads also uh, that that uh, that the inverter might have to interface with and so uh, uh, for example on the on the left hand side so we can see uh, the HVA, HVA battery pack also feeds the DC DC converter. Uh, so uh, there, there is uh, a step down of, of the voltage uh, that is required uh, often of times to supply the low voltage loads. 
and also the taxon inverter has to interface has to communicate with the HV battery pack also and and it also obviously supplies power to the traction motor so uh, in case of a higher voltage uh, system uh, there will be HV cables uh, that that connect to these uh, three main components the the battery pack the inverter and and the motor and yeah so and also uh, there are some charging connections also for for the battery so uh, most EVs can come with an onboard charger, uh, but uh, there are also far charging stations that that externally charge uh, charge the vehicle. So, uh, having seen this architecture now, uh, let's let's see what what exactly an inverter does in an electric vehicle. Okay, so so basically, uh, an inverter uh, converts the energy stored in the battery of the vehicle into into a into a multi-phase ac power for for the traction drive so strictly speaking it it, it does a dc to ac com, uh, conversion uh, of the electric power uh, the D battery is converted to the ac power uh, required by the motor and depending on the on the vehicle requirements uh, the dc voltage can can range from 24 volts to as high as 800 volts and uh, uh, while the power level also, uh, depending on the size of the vehicle, can can range from 5 kilowatt to as high as 150 kilowatt. So we can see uh, the variation in the in the requirements, and uh, this makes uh, inverter one of the biggest engineering challenges uh, while while building an EV, uh, because uh, uh, for for example, for a high voltage system. Uh, there are a lot of challenges uh, that are to be faced uh, while while designing an inverter. Uh, so to understand how how the inverter, uh, you know, what roles does it play in the vehicle? So uh, as we as we saw earlier, uh, an inverter is completely responsible for the traction of the vehicle. So uh, since it feeds the motor, uh, it will it is responsible for the forward and the backward motion of the vehicle. Uh, and it it uh, uh, it uh, there are different modes in the vehicle uh, uh, that are arising in the electric vehicles where the vehicle may creep at a, at a short speed. Uh, so uh, so e creep is one of the uh, roles that an inverter has to play. And then there are there may be different modes of operation for the for the vehicle. Uh, so and uh, for example the eco or the sports mode and also a hill hold operation is also sought after nowadays so an inverter will play play a role there also so all these are traction applications where uh, where the inverter will be supplying power to the movement of the vehicle then uh, on the on the powertrain side uh, an inverter will also be responsible uh, for the braking uh, for the of, the of the vehicle so we all know that evs uh, offer the benefit of regenerative to braking so so in that case the inverter will transfer the AC power now back into the battery. So uh, it it's, it's operates now in the, in the reverse mode now, and in fact acts as a, a rectifier, you can say, uh, because it's AC to DC conversion. Uh, then apart from that, uh, it has some other modes uh, like like the DC link discharge, uh, where uh, as we'll as we'll see further, uh, it has to quickly uh, reduce the voltage on the DC link. Or to, to a safe voltage then uh, we have some other features like the torque vectoring where uh, the torque delivered to the different wheels can be controlled uh, for for an all wheel drive vehicle and uh, it can even be responsible for a warming of the battery uh, by causing some current flow uh, in the system also from the vehicle point of view uh, an inverter uh, is well capable uh, to to shut down your vehicle in case of an emergency uh, so it's this a, a very critical safety feature and also it it uh, it can affect it's responsible for handling the stability of the vehicle since it's providing the main torque to the vehicle so uh, the stability of the vehicle is also controlled by the your traction inverter now so all it's it's important to understand these multiple roles because uh, that's how uh, 
you will start designing the inverter once you once you know uh, what are the requirements uh, that that the inverter has to satisfy uh, after that so uh, just to understand uh, so inverter electrically speaking uh, will have many subsystems uh, within it within itself and the two main uh, subsystems uh, can be classified as as a power board where where most of your power is processed so all the power that is delivered to the vehicle uh, will be processed in the power board of the inverter and this power board again will have some uh, power supplies uh, that are that are required for its uh, internal functioning uh, and so this will have some isolated or non-isolated dc dc uh, converters then it will need some uh, current and voltage sensing uh, which is very essential for the functioning of the inverter and uh, you'll have some other components like uh, emi filters uh, uh, that take care of the noise uh, from the inverter uh, on the on the we have another uh, subsystem called as a control board which which is responsible for the controlling the power uh, uh, inside the inverter so uh, this control board will will interface to your other systems uh, like uh, for example the hv battery that we saw in the architecture uh, then it will have some signal isolation because it is interacting with uh, multiple uh, components at different uh, uh, voltage levels and uh, also it it will be primarily responsible for the digital processing of the signals uh, that are that are required for its control action so uh, these are the two two main uh, subsystems uh, we, we further we will understand how how they interact with each other now uh, just to distinguish uh, a traction inverter from an from an industrial inverter uh, uh, it's uh, important to know uh, so this slide talks uh, talks about that uh, so uh, typically in industries we see uh, inverters are often uh, fed from a rectified three phase ac mains so you don't see a battery uh, battery fed inverter in industries they are often fed from your, your three phase ac mains uh, which is first rectifier uh, on the other hand uh, our ev inverter uh, will always be fed by a dc voltage directly and this this will be a battery battery source then uh, in industry in industry application uh, the motors typically have a constant speed operation and uh, stored operation and uh, this is uh, in an ev uh, this is completely the opposite so you have complete unpredictable dynamic conditions because uh, we know the vehicle has a very uh, variable drive cycle so it's, it's a complete in contrast with a with an industrial uh, inverter also for your industry uh, there is no size constraint uh, uh, you know because uh, you, uh, you uh, you can have much bigger size inverters uh, so there is no specific form factors uh, that are required uh, uh, in in many cases or uh, some specific industries might have some requirements but mostly it is not so uh, stringent however in a vehicle uh, due to due to packaging due to space constraints uh, you need to have a very small size inverter to because you have to package that inverter in the vehicle so this also makes high efficiency of you you should be able to package it in a very small size in in all the four quadrants or typically uh, while while in industry they often operate only in a single quadrant operation so this uh, this is it for the for the key differences uh, between the industrial and the traction inverters now uh, let's go we move to the uh, the key technical aspects uh, for the inverter so so as we saw the primary function of the inverter will be to convert the dc into the ac and so there are different ways to do that and uh, uh, as we know uh, pulse width modulation is is the most commonly employed technique for this and uh, there are different uh, modulation techniques also uh, that will allow you to to generate the ac voltage in a much more efficient way and uh, so the 
the, the most basic is the six step which where uh, where the pulse is not which uh, the switches in a six step manner and uh, it's it's often employed to make music. so that's the key uh, key benefit of that uh, the other end uh, pulse fit modifications uh, uh, modulations uh, will will give you much better uh, and efficient uh, dc to ac conversion and uh, we see different types uh, that are commonly used there uh, uh, the most common being the sine pwm uh, which we uh, which is quite simple and less complex and which will which will help you to get a considerably smooth sine wave at the output uh, um, but they uh, but they off they they will they bring increased complexity into your control control system and so pwm is uh, almost essential now for for effective control of your ac voltage uh, as op as opposed to the six step so only in uh, in extreme uh, cases uh, you will be using your six step to extract uh, maximum voltage uh, out of your battery and another benefit of pwm is that it will uh, it leads to reduction in harmonics in your output voltage uh, and so this is going to help your motor uh, generate torque in a much more efficient manner. Uh, so uh, we we always need to remember that the inverter is going to drive a load, and so the motor motor performance is of paramount importance for the inverter. So uh, this is a an example of a of a sine PWM. So so we can see the six step inverter here. Uh, fed fed by a fed by DC source, and uh, so a sine PWM will 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 get you these three sine waves at the output, uh, VA VB VC, uh, which which are your AC voltages, and uh, uh, it's it's basically uh, uh, the technique consists of of a carrier carrier signal, uh, which which is uh, quite a high frequency. And you will have a modulating signal imposed on that. So these three are your modulating signals. And uh, based on this, uh, a PWM command will be generated. And uh, this will drive your switches, uh, this uh, S1 to S6, to get you the sine modulated uh, output waveforms at the output, which will then be fed to the motor. Uh, so yeah so coming back to our uh, 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 subsystems that we discussed before so uh, we, we saw that uh, there is a, there's a power board uh, and there's a control board okay? and so the the key purpose of the of the power board or or a power modulator we can call it is is to is to is energy conversion so the 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 energy uh, provided by the source, uh, it, it needs to convert it and provide it to the motor, uh, which which is going to drive your load or the vehicle in this case. And in the process, uh, the power modulator uh, will be controlling your voltage, the current, or even the mode of operation of motor. So, uh, so so it also controls power from the source, uh, such that. Uh, the the torque speed requirements of the motor are are satisfied by it so that's that's the key objective of the of the power modulator also on the control the control card or the control unit that we saw uh, which uh, which typically operates at a much smaller power uh, is actually uh, controlled by my microprocessor and it it operates the power modulator in a desired way so, so we can see that there's a there's a feedback loop. Uh, so, uh, based on the uh, sensing from from the motor, the control unit is going to dictate your power modulator, uh, the requirements of the torque and speed, and uh, by providing such commands, uh, it is uh, it is going to operate the motor in a desired way. 
and much critical to this functioning is is the sensing unit uh, because uh, your uh, power board as the control board uh, needs needs uh, uh, continuous understanding of the critical parameters such as the speed and the motor current and also the torque so you, you know to have proper sensors uh, mounted in your system uh, which is going to feed feed this data to your control unit uh, which will in turn command your power power board as we just saw so that was about the uh, main uh, uh, block diagram now let's have a look at the main components uh, from a hardware point of view uh, that that embody this inverter so so in this figure we we see we see an hu battery again uh, which is the main source for our inverter then uh, we we see the six uh, switches here uh, which are which is uh, which make up uh, an any any inverter then uh, on on top of that we we have a dc link capacitor uh, connected between the battery and and the six switches so what exactly is the role of the dc link capacitor is uh, it will help to maintain a steady voltage across these terminals and will absorb any any ripples in the voltage uh, because uh, the ripples in voltage can can cause some instability or uh, losses in your system so it's critical to get rid of them so your dc link capacitor will uh, will be will be placed on the dc link to take care of that also uh, in evs we often see some uh, uh, contactors to disconnect the battery from from on the rest of the system so uh, but these these are external to the inverter so but later so uh, the, this this will be either six uh, discrete switches or or three half bridge modules uh, so half bridge module will make make one leg of the inverter so and either an igbt or a mosfet will be used for that uh, and so they they will make the main power board of your inverter so these three six six switches or three half bridge modules constitute your main power board of the inverter then the, and they they will be feeding power to the traction motor that that we that we saw earlier and uh, so the motor can be of a different type so it can be an induction motor or a permanent magnet motor Uh, as per the vehicle requirements and uh, also most importantly uh, there's a heat sink for your inverter that is going to absorb the losses uh, that are generated by this by these six switches uh, so so we understand no no there is no idle switch so whenever they process power uh, they are going to produce some losses uh, which needs to be uh, thermally dissipated and your heat sink will will play a role for the heat heat dissipation and uh, again uh, there are different types in this and this can be either air cooling or a liquid cooling system uh, again dependent on your on your vehicle requirements uh, so we also have a communication in interface uh, for for the inverter uh, as we saw because it is going to interact with uh, other components in your electric vehicle and another critical is the gate driver uh, which will see uh, which which will allow you to drive these switches uh, from from your control card 